or parts. One, prepare the file. Two, establish a viewpoint with RenderWorks cameras. Three, introduce lighting. And four, render. Now we can get consistent, good quality results when we follow these stepping stones carefully and methodically. RenderWorks has the tools to simplify the process, and we can also adjust the settings for the first task. The first step is to prepare a 3D model. Now this includes building the model and applying textures to its surfaces. A good model for photorealistic rendering will include colors, textures, a good level of detail in the model itself, and some entourage to add credibility to a scene. Textures and entourage are included with Vectorworks libraries and subscription libraries, and we can access them via the resource manager. And we can, of course, create our own resources as well. The next step is to place Renderworks cameras in the scene, which we covered earlier in Chapter 3. For interior views, we can think about switching from a narrower view to a wider angle view on the camera to include a greater part of the scene in the view. And also consider using a 16 by 9 format in case images are intended to be viewed on a TV screen or on a computer. That's a longer, narrower format. Now we can place lights in the scene. And this task is generally easier for daytime exterior renderings but it can require a little bit more work for interiors. For daytime exteriors, all we need to do really is simply place a sunlight or a heliodon in the scene and then render, and that will take care of most lighting requirements. For interiors, we can use sunlight coming through the windows, and we can also use interior lights that represent light fixtures. Vectorworks includes a variety of light object types that can be used for interior renderings, and it also provides extensive libraries of 3D lights that contain light objects within them to place in scenes. And with interior views, we can duplicate the appearance of actual visible lights, or we can illuminate the scene with hidden lights, and then include light objects for appearance if they're visible in the view. Now the two can work together, or they can be completely separate efforts. Finally, we render with one of the RenderWorks photorealistic styles. The photorealistic styles are combinations of settings, and they include photographic or image backgrounds, lighting from the sky, and preset quality settings. We can find more detail on render work styles later in the book, but in the meantime, we can take a quick look at the various steps in the process. So the first thing we'll do is open the exercise file for this chapter, which is exercise 8. Now go to the saved view, viewport 1. We'll select the viewport, and in the object info palette, click on the background render drop-down box, and select RenderWorks style realistic exterior final. Now click on the update button to update the viewport, and the viewport will render in the style that we selected. It's a good idea to experiment with some of the other RenderWorks styles to see their effects and to compare them with a photorealistic appearance. Not all of those styles are photorealistic. Included in this file, by the way, is a custom style that was prepared specifically for this exercise and has different settings than the ones that are supplied with the styles that come with the program. So let's summarize the basic photorealistic workflow. First, we prepare the file. Then we establish a viewpoint with RenderWorks cameras. We introduce lighting and then we render. And all of this will be discussed in a great deal more detail in the chapters to come.